Hello, and welcome to another episode of Tribunal of the Grill, where we talk about all things Power Rangers, including the actors that play them. My name is Brandon. My name is Lena. And my name is Will. And today we will be talking about a, a little piece of article, you know what I'm saying, that our good friend Seamus over here at No Pink Spandex and Denim Geek um, went ahead and, and wrote for the people, you know, because Power Rangers hadn't always been too uh, accepting of the daughters. And, um, you know, it took a minute to get here. So, you know, that's what the article is mainly about. You know, it's about the, the the road that was pretty much less traveled, should we say, right? <laughs> um, and, you know, how we got here. Uh, and a lot of people had some input, had some very good input, actually. Had some things to say in that little piece of article. So we're, gonna, we're just going to talk a little bit about that. And we're also going to talk about the first episode of Don Brothers. Mm. now you know do we like it do we not like it are we different we're gonna talk about it and you know we're gonna you know see if see whatever we come up with you know because normally you know when we talk about it something sometimes some things change you know some, some some opinions change you know and then sometimes they say the same you know it'd be like okay this was trash not, you know, I, I thought it was trash. It is trash. So whatever. Or I thought it was good and it is good, you know, whatever. So, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it. You know, we'll get, we'll get together and we'll discuss, right? Uh, but before we do, I would just like to remind everybody that we are on Apple Podcasts. We are on Google Podcasts. We are on SoundCloud. We are on YouTube. We are everywhere where you can listen to podcasts. Um, you know, so definitely like, subscribe, share, do all the things, do your part, let, help us to grow. You know what I'm saying? Help us, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, we want everybody to enjoy, enjoy the show and you should want everybody to enjoy it too. You know, like, you know, you listen, the more people talk about it, the more you can have a conversation with what we had to say, right? You know, mm -hmm. and then also you can be supporting the actors and the people who are, you know, who we be talking about. You can support what they're doing too because they need the support. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of these actors, a lot of times they do do a lot of, you know, personal projects or they do personal stuff. And it's like nobody really knows about it because most of the time people just stop paying attention to them after they're, after they're doing Power Rangers. Like, let's just be for real. Unless they're like on like a nationally syndicated show or something or constantly doing things even then even then the people forget the people don't know because we know yeah. that you know like you get we get people saying stuff all the time like oh i didn't know they did that oh i didn't know they did that and i'm like mm. well what do you mean and that's why we're so important because yeah. it's like you know <laughs> if we don't you know if you don't share this stuff you know with the people it's like they're not going to know, you know, like Absolutely. you said, they're not going to really, you know, go out there and be like, yeah, I'm going to do it. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, I'm gonna, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to go and look at this. Or I'm going to go and support this or whatever, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for sure. So that's that's why it's so important. It's like, come on, y'all, because it's like th their careers just don't stop just because no. they're done with Power Rangers. Like, that's just literally one or two years of their lives. <laughs> Well, for, apparently it. for this new season, it's only eight weeks of their lives. <laughs> well, I mean, hey, you know, whatever this is, whatever this new thing going to be, you know? Right. Um, <laughs> you know? But, <laughs> but no, you're but absolutely listen. right, though, right? And, right. And the thing is, a lot of them do have careers before and a lot of them will have careers after. So it's just right. and, and the thing is, sometimes it's not necessary that they're just going to be in films. They ask, you know, they do other stuff too. I know like Michael Coupon had like a whole studio where you can go take Instagram photos, make TikTok videos and all that stuff. But obviously you have to take that down um, due to reasons we don't know. And I'm not going to obviously speak upon that because I don't know all the facts, but obviously it's no longer available right now. And then like he, what, like he, he had a donut shop. 
um, you know, same with Kevin from um, Power in Your Time Force. He had like a restaurant he was doing. Mm-hmm. So it's just like they have things like outside of just acting TV and like media and stuff like that, too. Right. Like, I think Glenn um, Dustin from Power Rangers Ninja Storm, he's a lawyer. And from what I can gather right now, he's selling homes too. like, look at him go. Right. And I mean, shoot. Um Oh gosh. Um Danny Slavin's a lawyer. Yeah, too. I was literally gonna say I forgot his first name. I was like, oh gosh, Leo Danny. From Lost there we go. Leo Paul's Galaxy. Yeah, he's a lawyer. Yeah. Like, you know, all he paid people. for he used his um his Lost Galaxy checks to pay for uh yeah. school, I believe. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Um his acting, he actually was also on Safe by the Bell like a couple times. So he definitely mm-hmm. used that. Um we got um What's her name? Allie Armstrong. She's a wedding planner. So like Mm -hmm. there's a lot of them out there, you know, like they do all kinds of things that's not within the realm that we are used to, like the media part of it, you know? Right. Exactly. Exactly. And that's the whole point. Like, you know, I just feel like at the end of the day, you know, we should be supporting them because, I mean, at the end of the day, they are, they, they were once the same people that we, you know, enjoyed watching as children, you know, or as younger, you know, well, teenagers or whatever have you. Like, you know, we, we watched them, so why not? You know what I'm saying? Un- unless they done, went out there and done some, some foolishness. But, I mean, for the most part, they're like, they're decent, good people. So it's like, if y'all cool peoples, why not? You know? Mm-hmm. You know, like I said, the, the book just doesn't stop just because it's like, oh, yeah, they ain't Power Rangers no more, so I guess I don't care. It's like, no, like, keep going, keep supporting. So that is why we do what we do, to keep on educating you all so that you can, you know? So that you can. Speaking of support, you know, so, of course, um, we did go ahead and we got some comments, you know. So on our YouTube, we have By- Byron Weaver. He says, awesome video tribunal crew. Keep up the good work. You guys are more phenomenal. My thoughts on Power and Design of 3 Season 2. So I watched all 11 episodes and so far, without giving any spoilers, I really enjoyed these episodes. I will reveal all the spoilers once everyone has watched all 11 episodes and once the rest of the season is out. But I, all I will say is that what I wanted to see more of in season one, I got in season, in season two. As I said before, in review for Power Rangers Dino Fury season one, thank you for thank you to Simon Bennett and Hasbro and the entire cast of Power Rangers Dino Fury for all your hard work that you guys put in. I love the first half of Power Rangers Dino Fury season two, and I really look forward to what to the rest of what season two has in store. We do too. Mm-hmm. Um, I give episode one 3.5 out of five and episode two a three out of five. Listen, pretty much about the same thing that we said, you know. Um, and I and I agree as well. Like, definitely the show has been has been great from like like it's been such a breath of fresh air. Like not now, is it perfect? No, far from it. Like there are there are a lot of things that are just like, Ooh. but <laughs> but also, you know, there's still things that are actually that they've done right you know that they've done very well um which honestly is the focus of our next piece (laughs) that we are going to talk about in terms of power rangers and the things that they've done right which is izzy garcia Mm -hmm. like how i did that segue thank you (laughs) Um, (laughs) Look at Brad and go patting himself on the back. <laughs> on I the mean, back. listen, because my segues as of late have been terrible. But <laughs> you know uh, what? I'm not gonna lie, you need to step up your game. I know, I know. <laughs> They've either been terrible or non-existent. I'm like, oh gosh, I need to do better. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, but hey, like, let's get into it, right? So Izzy Garcia, she is playing a. Range, well, she is a ranger. Tessa, Tessa Rao is playing. 
Izzy Garcia, who is a ranger who is on the LGBTQIA plus spectrum. So Seamus Kelly, as we mentioned before, he was a part, he's a part of No Pink Spandex, but he also writes for Den of Geek as well. Um, he also has other, uh, he also has another show that he does, which is mainly about Robotech. So if you want to check that out, you most certainly can. Um, but yeah, so you know, Seamus does all Seamus does all the things. Like he has written plenty of articles that we've read <laughs> that we've talked about um so if you want to go and listen to those reviews we can definitely you can definitely go ahead and do that it was about the, um what what was supposed to be included in the original Mind Morphin Power Rangers movie um he talked about I think one for Turbo as well so I mean he's done like a lot of great articles so definitely go go and check those out um but yes, so the title of this article here is called Power Rangers, The Road to Queer Representation. Now it is long. So we ain't gonna talk about the whole thing, but we're gonna talk about little points here and there. You know, we're gonna talk about little points. But one of the things that um, right out the gate, first one, first, first, pretty much the first thing out the gate, he um, mentions, um, of course, Dino Fury, because that's obviously the most current um lgbtq uh reference that is in power rangers as of right now but um you know we do go back to the originals the one who started it all and the one who was a part of the show who you know had to pretend to be straight which is david yost who played billy cranston <laughs> the blue ranger in mighty more power rangers i'm pretty sure it gagged everybody when it came out that he was actually gay <laughs> Mm-hmm. You know, now for some people, some of us, it was like, I mean, yes, but, <laughs> but for some, but for a lot of people, people were gagged. I mean, it was on TMZ, like, and mind you, it was yeah. no pink spandex that bro- no pink spandex that broke it. Um, mm-hmm. You know, they shared it all over TMZ. Uh, well, TMZ shared the the interview from no pink spandex all over TMZ. It was shared everywhere. Like it was, it was like the most groundbreaking thing that ever happened for the show, other than you know the show's existence when it first came out. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. Let I mean, let's just be for real. Like there was no other groundbreaking thing that happened in Power Rangers after that article since Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Like let's be for real. If you have not seen the interview, it is still on YouTube. Go and check it out. It is a phenomenal interview. I think it's what is it three parts. Two or three parts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you want to go check it out, definitely, I think you should. It's a great interview. Um, David was very candid about mm-hmm. the stuff that he experienced, and he even and he still didn't actually say all of the things. Like he didn't go into detail. Um, he actually went into detail during an interview, not an interview during a um, kind of mm-hmm. like a panel that he was on. Yeah he was talking to um what was it, a bunch of um like a mormon church or something like that can't remember yeah, that's exactly something i actually don't know about yeah because i know that it was it was mentioned in the article um i just don't have it like right up in front of me right away it was um he was speaking to a, to a conference of lgbtq mormons in 2011 um mm-hmm. but yeah that that one was a, a lot more deeper of a um of an of an account of what he went through but basically Mm -hmm. as we as we all know um david Jost experienced a lot of um a lot of taunting a lot of terrible things that were said about him on set of the show while he was Mm -hmm. on it during the time which is the reason why pretty much in zeo at towards the end he disappeared never to be heard heard from again and then you know we see this old man (laughs) in his place and they talking about that him you know what i'm saying like that's why because he walked off set because they kept calling him one they they called him one too many f words and it was like all right i'm done you know what i'm saying kind of a situation which is sad because it's like in the workplace in the workplace though but if you really but let's be for real what breaks my heart about that whole situation it's one thing to you know, have speculation or to be, you know, kind of like hearsay, like, ooh, you know, like, I wonder if, you know, if he get down or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, everybody that had that conversation before or heard that conversation being had or something like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why that that's a thing. 
but it is like people just find it very like find find it to be a conversation piece to talk about whether somebody is gay or straight i don't know what it is but whatever that can quickly turn into harassment and the fact that david put up with it for almost four years that's wild to me that is so crazy you know, and then of course, now I don't remember this and I and I want to find this. I want to find this so bad, but Seamus referenced a um, a panel that was done in 2011 where Scott Page, um, who recently died this year, played at a at a um at a Power Rangers um, panel, and it was some foot it was some behind the scenes footage, and you could hear them like basically making you know gay remarks and you know like saying really homophobic things and how everybody just kind of laughed he goes on tmz and we talked about this before will um we mentioned this we were talking about this before how he went on tmz and was like oh no david is just hard to work with you know and he's just yeah. yeah he's just difficult and he's being he's you know he's this and he's that and calling him out his name and it's like that's mighty funny coming from somebody who just literally just played a video of <laughs> you guys using like homopho- homopho- homophobic slurs. You know what I'm wow. saying? Was Which quite validates David's account. Go ahead. Question: Was that the f- the footage from like season two that leaked like a decade ago, or was it something else? Oh, what footage are you talking about? The f- you said that there was footage leaked of. No, I didn't. Oh, no, you didn't. I said said it was played at a panel. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I'm I'm trying to figure out what footage you're talking about. Yeah, there was was some footage. um, I forgot what episode it was. Maybe the the Putty on the Brain episode. And the kids are in, or the cast are in the classroom. Twee hurt her leg and David sitting behind her. And then, like, it looked like he was being antagonized there. But this mm. this is different footage. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. That, that was very um, interesting to watch. Mm-hmm. It was kind of chaotic. It was a lot going Not on. just chaotic, but it felt, like, it made me wince a little bit. I was like, oh, this feels this, this makes you feel uncomfortable like it was really making me feel uncomfortable and you can kind of tell that even david felt a little uncomfortable that death glare he gave <laughs> yeah like you could even tell he even felt uncomfortable it was just like that yeah like you could tell it wasn't all you know roses and cutesy on set like you could tell and plus also too like we also have to keep in mind when Power Rangers first came out, that was a totally different era. Like we have gotten to the point where we are now a lot more accepting, not saying that things are different because things are not um, in terms of like, oh yeah, it's, it's okay to be gay. No, it's not. Um, you know, it's a little more accepting and we've, got, we've gotten, a, we, we, we've gotten pretty far and we still, but we still have a long way to go. Um, but, you know, just the, when, when that show was being filmed, it's like Hollywood execs were still basically telling people that they thought or that they, that they thought or heard what was gay or whatever that their actors, they were telling them like, look, to protect your image or whatever, basically, basically saying to make sure you keep making us money, (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know? You need to be straight. You need to continue to be straight. Whatever you do in your private life is your business. But to the public, like you need to be DL and you need to be like, you know what I'm saying? Like you need to keep that shit on the road. Keep it on the low. Like don't tell nobody kind of a situation. And that's messed up. That is really messed up. So like it wouldn't surprise me that we've had, that we probably had like so many LGBTQ actors come through the show and you know couldn't really be themselves or had to pretend to be you know something else because maybe they were told 
you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like it's or just in general or any or any show, honestly. Like you can't do, you can't be yourself, you know, because if you do, then you won't be able to work, kind of a thing. That's really messed up. But yes, David basically um said in the conference, he basically said, you know, I said I I'm not gonna be gay, I'm gonna focus on my career. I try to date women, so to speak. But I started hearing rumors about me and my sexuality. For three years, the rumors kept getting more and more relentless. That's kind of, that's bad. Like, that's, <laughs> that's really bad. Like, you know, that, that just sucks. Um, but yeah, he went ahead and he loved CEO. The uh, article also mentions that Jackie Marchland also mentioned that, you know, Haley from Power Rangers Dino Thunder was supposed to be a little piece of um, a little piece of bisexual, <laughs> which I what shocked me. I'm saying that shocked me because I always thought Haley had a little thing for Doctor O. I mean, if she was bisexual, she that is still possible. I mean, it's still possible, but also like I, it, it just like for me. I guess at the very end, maybe and, and maybe it does make sense. It, it would make sense, like after everything is over, everybody is going their separate way. You know, the article does say that you know originally they kind of planned for her to be like, "Oh, I'm going back east to see a quote unquote friend." Um, you know, it could have been that she was just like, "Look, God, no, ain't gonna give me none, so I might as well just go and pay." <laughs> <laughs> well. In all fairness, I I got the vibe that she was very much an asexual vibe more than anything. I mean, it could be because they wrote their characters uh, like sexless. I mean, yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean that that could definitely. I mean, I be guess the case. yeah, like yeah. I guess like um, prior to that, um, we didn't really have any horny cast since like. <laughs> Oh my god, like in space, maybe? No, no, because remember we had Joel and Lightspeed. Oh shit, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so nah. I forgot. And, then, and then I'm forgetting about um Wes and Jim. Yeah, yeah, you know, which you know, I find very funny that they're like, oh we can't have anybody be queer or, or allude to anybody being queer on the show, but y'all have all these straight relationships. And then what makes it so crazy is like Disney, I don't know what Disney was doing. Child Disney was just like, <laughs> we don't want nobody to be together. Like, <laughs> screw that. Y'all ain't, we, y'all ain't getting no relationship whatsoever. They all might get a some good little piece of looting, but ain't nobody making yeah, movie shows. Yeah, yeah, you know, like ain't nobody dating. So it get it together. Like it was a, uh, like some sort of a mandate, and I don't like if Saban wasn't because if Saban wasn't there, how did that kind of go over to Disney as well? Like the no kiss rule, and then then just not having relationships. But there's other. Disney properties that had relationships that were for kids. That, that never made sense to me. I don't know. I, I do kind of feel like maybe there was kind of a mandate thing. Maybe. I mean, and this is not reflected in the article, nor do we have any proof of this. I'm just spitballing. But I do kind of feel like there are certain things that are just mandated by, like, kind of like a show bible or something like that just basically being like in order to have a power in your season or in order to have a power in your show you must do x y and z like you know i've it always like heard that, that for you, you say what decades. it seems like they just stuck to that for decades and it's so strange because yeah. it's I, I think that's one of the small things that kind of you know hurt its is potential growth Oh, there's many dumb. things like, that hurt his that hurt his growth for sure. Of course, of course, we've spoken about it many times. Yeah, so that's, like, that's just crazy. Days. Like it's it, other other kids show properties, um, whether they're um, you know marketed to boys or girls or everybody. Like they're able to do so many things, and Power Rangers just they do not let they do not allow. 
for so much. It's, it's just weird. It really is. And I mean, like, my thing is, I really do think that with Disney specifically, I remember, I don't know if, I, if I'm misremembering this correctly or not, um, but misremembering this correctly, that makes no sense. But I don't know whether I'm misremembering or not, but I want to say they were like, Disney was kind of like, oh, no, we can't do relationships because boys would be like ill you know or whatever and they didn't and they were like they didn't want to like gross boys out or some some dumb shit i was just like Ill. Can date mary jane yes yeah I, oh god yeah <laughs> yes make sense. I, it, it never makes sense like it, it to me it i don't know what a lot of times these executives, these people sitting sitting in these big chairs, none of this, honestly, a lot of times, none of the logic that they make makes sense. Like, none of it. Like, none of it makes any sense. I just feel like a lot of times they just, they say things and they do certain things because of the fact that they have power. Mm-hmm. And they just be like, you know what? I'm just, I'm just going to say and do what I want. It may not make any sense, but I'm going to do it anyway because I said so. And a lot of times what will happen is they'll have kids at home and they'll base it off of their own children or they like, you know what I'm saying? Or something like that. And if your child is, you know, feels like, oh, I don't like that. You ask one child, your child, would you like this? And they're like, no. That's one child out of like millions of children. <laughs> so it's just like, I really do think, because I've, I've heard of things like that happening before, where they'd be, where like executives would like literally ask their children and they'll be like, no. And then they'll just go ahead and be like, nah. You know, like, it, it, like there's just dumb stuff that happens like that all the time. Um, I'm not saying that happened in Power Rangers, but these things do happen. So I'm pretty sure, like, somebody did some stupid shit like that and was like, oh, well, we can't do this kind of a thing. Or they just literally are just so behind on times and are just so stupid that literally, like, they just don't know how people or know how kids think. In the interview, they also talk about how liter- how Vic and Monty um were actually um were portrayed now a lot of people thought i i i included i thought that they were a couple or they were intended to be played as a couple kind of a thing because to me i just always felt like monty big and monty was in a in a in an abusive relationship that's how it felt to me (laughs) They also like it. They were in a music relationship because you always had Victor, who felt like the abusive Dom, Dom top, who was dumb, Ugh. and Monty was the submissive <laughs> bottom that was smart. <laughs> <laughs> and My you know, God. like I always thought that, like I always thought that they were in an abuse in an abusive relationship, but apparently they weren't, according to Simon Bennett. Um, and Caleb Bennett, who who played uh, Monty. Apparently, that's not the case. Uh, but but Caleb did say he did say that he did play the character gay on purpose. He did kind of play playing with a gay flair on purpose, which to me, honestly, now I'm not saying that the character was great because there was nothing great in Ninja Steel, but <laughs> but. I would probably say out of every in, out of That's every character, I would That's probably say that Jody. those two are more interesting. What did you say? That's a lie. The great thing from Ninja Steel was the cast. Yeah, maybe the cast, but not the what cast, but not their the characters. Cast. The cast. Mm. I never said their characters. I said the cast. Okay. I'm talking about the show itself, the characters. I'm not talking about the cast. Because there are casts that we like. I mean, I like the Ninja Steel cast. I think they're fantastic. As people, their characters are terrible. Like, I mean, you know I love me some Zoe. 
But Haley was terrible. Like her character was awful. Not to say that she did a bad job, but her character was terrible. No, I know who stole the show. The dog. You forgot. Absolutely. The dog dog was great. The dog was fantastic. The dog needs an Oscar, like a war or something. Absolutely. (laughs) Yes, it does. It definitely needs an Oscar. Ah, And that's why they always say, that's why they always say you never act with children and animals because they will stand you up every time. (laughs) That is why they say that. You never act with a child and with an animal. You never do. So it's just like, oh, well, that dog (laughs) shined more than anybody did on that show. But, you know, it's just, it's really sad that like, even the executives, first of all, while they were making the show, and this is something that they pointed out in the article as well, when they were making the show, literally like, Vic and Monty, like, they would literally say, oh, don't look at him for too long like that. Or why is your knee, why is your leg so close to his? Or it's just like, just weird shit. And it's just like, really? Really? As if friends can't, can't sit close to each other or just anybody can just look at somebody for a long time. Like, that happens. That doesn't mean it's sexual. Exactly. And I mean, honestly, even though Kayla played the character as gay, like, I mean, I, like, the way the characters were intended was supposed to be kind of like a, um, a hero worship complex. Exactly. But even then, it's like, yes, it makes sense because you admire this person that much to the point where you're going to do, you're going to be all, like, all up on them and, you know, say all these things. It makes sense. So it makes sense for Caleb to play the character the way he did. But these people over, you know, over in the United States over here, and I think probably based in L.A., because that's where Saban uh, was based in, based over here in L.A. are like, yeah, no, that that, that looks gay. No, y'all are weird. (laughs) (laughs) Y'all are weird, like mad weird. And I'm like, Y'all make these same, y'all make these choices and y'all say these things. Meanwhile, nine times out of ten, you probably are in a secret gay relationship or in an open, right. open gay relationship. <laughs> like, and mm. quiet as it's kept. Jackie March didn't even make comment to that in the article, basically saying, like, she knew that there were Disney execs that were gay, but would still revoke gay things being in the show. And it's like, that just makes no sense to me. I mean, when you're trying to make sure that, uh, I guess, your bag is secured because you know that the company doesn't want it. And then also to try and keep questions away from your own identity, I, I guess it does kind of make a little sense. I hear that. But even then, I, I hear trying to protect yourself and, I, and all this stuff. Just screwed up. It's very screwed up. And, and, I, and I think that's what I'm, I'm having the hardest time with battling when, when you hear stuff like this. I think that's the hardest thing that bothers me the most. It's like, you yourself are like this. You know that you would like to see this because it is a reflection that, of, of you that you would want to see on your, on your TV. Or, or maybe or maybe it may even be a situation where you might hate yourself for it. I don't know. I don't care. That is your business. But, and however, I do feel like, and, I, and I've always said this, represent, representation matters. And I'm not even going to hold you. Seeing Becky G play Trini as a questioning, you know, a questioning, a questioning teenager, questioning her sexuality, for me, just seeing that alone made me feel like finally we have arrived. You know? Um, because for me, it's just like, first of all, it took forever. It took way too long for this <laughs> to even happen. But I just find it very interesting that, you know, the only way that we can get it squeezed in is if she's questioning it like she couldn't just be like yeah 
I have a girlfriend. I had a girlfriend. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, she couldn't just do that. It was just like, nah, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. And I mean, to be honest, it was a beautiful scene. The campfire scene, we talk about this a lot. The campfire scene is probably one of the best scenes in the entire movie. It really is. Um, Because it was just so raw. It was just so real. Um, So I enjoyed that part of the movie so much. But still, at the end of the day, it's still messed up because it's like, damn. Like, first of all, we don't know if Trini ever resolved or had any resolve with her sexuality. We don't know if she ended up getting a girlfriend. We don't know if she ended up dating a little piece of trans. We don't, we don't know nothing. Like, we have no idea what this girl could have been. I do think that there were plenty of moments that they could have done it and just didn't. And the article does talk about that because even Kayla Bennett mentions that, you know, them trying to bring gayness into the show or bring those type of characters into the show, like Saban was heavily against it. It was just like, no. Even Michael Tabor tried to play his character, um, Riley, from Dino Charge, the Green Ranger, even he tried to play his character gay, you know, um, even though he was technically supposed to be a straight character, but he played him as gay. Now, we all knew Riley was a daughter. We all knew. We all knew. <laughs> there was a whole lot of subtext in the stuff that he was saying where it was just like, oh, yeah, this, this, this baby a daughter. I mean, he a daughter. Chase? Oh. Okay. Riley like, and Chase was a thing. Oh, my God. They were. Okay. Riley's love for Chase is adorable. Okay, and I don't care what nobody says. Nope. You cannot tell me mm. that when um, Chase was dating that girl, Riley was not jealous because we all <laughs> knew. He was jealous. It was so much like, oh, my friend is gone. No, it's more of like my love interest. What would you call it? Like his. His boo. His boo, okay, his boo, all right. I, like I would call him that. That's his boo, child. <laughs> that is his boo. Because you can't tell me that Riley ain't had a thing for a little piece of Chase. Like, and you can't tell me that they weren't. Because, first of all, Chase out here being a whole. First of all, what is with them making up, giving us all these toxic relationships? Because you got Chase over here just gaslighting Riley. And Riley is just like, look. I'm right here. I'm right here in front of you. Why can't you see me? It's giving real. I'm in the corner watching you kiss her. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it is giving very that. It is like every time Chase go and try to talk to somebody or whatever, talk to another girl, Riley is sitting in the corner like, why is he doing this knowing that I love him? And then Chase come back talk, talking to him at the end of the episode like, you know I love you, right? You know you're my baby, right? It's like, no! You leave that baby alone. Child, I just wrote a better show than what we got. But anyway, <laughs> girl, trying to tell you, trying to tell you, toxic, toxic, Power Rangers, no Power Ranger writers know they love toxic. Child, they don't. They don't know how to write loving relationships no more. Uh, I think we, we kind of went over it all. Um, I, I do remember during the week I had, um, I think in the chat, you kind of outlined like the main things. I um, just talked about it all. Yeah, I mean, like there was just so much, so much good stuff that happened in this article. I mean, they talked about how, um, how uh, Chloe from um, Hyperforce was intended to be bisexual, but Saban was like, nah. Uh, <laughs> you, you can't outwardly say she's bisexual, but you can you can throw hints. You can tell. You can tell. Okay, you could tell, but as long as she doesn't say it, that's all that matters. And, you know, it, it's so weird. It is so weird that they just keep on 
Savon was really good for the whole thing of like, now is not the time. Now is not the time. Now is not the time. We're not gonna, we're not gonna tell the people. Like, we're not gonna like come out with a gay character yet. We're not gonna do this. We're not gonna do that. And it's like, but why? Like, you just had Trini be a little piece of questioning. Why not go ahead and keep pushing, pushing forward and pushing the envelope? Like, I don't understand. But they still kept being like, nah, 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 nah. Now is not the time. 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 It's like, but when? When is going to be the time? Now, not now. It's not now. It's not going to be now. <laughs> it's not going to be now. Mm-hmm. You know? Actually, I actually just thought of something. Um, they uh, had mentioned that... Uh, they were there was still some pushback in the comics, like with um, Ari and Rem and Remy. Mm-hmm. But the fact that it was a comic book, it kind of made it a little bit easier. Because I, I remember um, they also said like Saban with the wait, wait, wait. They were given the argument of we want to have a big moment like this for the TV show, but um, before the comic, but around that time they were trans transitioning from uh from Saban to Hasbro so it kind of I guess the fight got lost in the in the in the cracks so plus my thing is I just feel like that was just I personally for me I just feel like that's that's bullshit you know yeah of course it is bullshit because if you wanted to do it you could have done it at Mm -hmm. any point at any point you could have done it like there were so many seasons hell they could have done it for kelsey and lightspeed go ahead and make that girl a lesbian Mm -hmm. we all knew we all knew kelsey was a lesbian a whole Mm -hmm. lesbian because you couldn't tell me her and nancy weren't weren't together (laughs) <laughs> okay, we we may not have ever seen Nancy ever again, but when you ever seen Kelsey that buddy buddy and all up on somebody like like that ever again? When you ever seen it? And can can you can we talk about their chemistry in one episode? That's crazy. So much chemistry, like that was like love at first sight chemistry. Like <laughs> they were like a thing in one episode. Like that was more chemistry we than we ever got in like hardly any other show in the Disney era. Like mm-hmm. that was like so much chemistry in one episode. So it's like, come on now, let's be for real. Like we all know, we know, we know that deep that that girl is a lesbian. Y'all could have went ahead and did that then. You could have did that with with uh, with Riley. You could have did that with Vita. So Vita was a whole lesbian. <laughs> Vita was a lesbian, but oh, that was under Disney. So we, so yeah, we can't do that because that was under Disney. And the big and the, and the men sitting behind and they on, in the chairs, they was too they were too scared to to go ahead and let their let their tea be shown. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, yeah, never mind, we ain't gonna do that. So Vita, Vita kind of you know kind of will always remain ambiguous. But Kelsey, yes, Kelsey, yes. Absolutely. Um, who else did I always suspect in Power Rangers during the um oh yeah, Antonio and Jaden. Gay. Oh my god. That <laughs> gay. <laughs> I'll never forget that, <laughs> that scene where they um had that sparring session. Okay. I'm back, baby, and I'm ready for I'm that. back, baby. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. I was like, what am I watching? <laughs> what am I watching? Like, um, the way Antonio said that, and Jaden looked like, yeah, I'm going to tear your ass up tonight. Like, I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh. Like don't uh. say it, like, <laughs> don't play. Like y'all need to stop playing with the people. Stop playing. You can't tell me Antonio wasn't a daughter, and Jaden was on the low. Shall 
Jaden was Jaden was like, I'm trade all the way up until Antonio got there. And then it was just like, dang, Antonio that made me let the cat out bag. That's the real reveal. That was the real reveal. Not that Jaden had a um that Jaden had a sister that was the original Red Ranger. Uh uh-uh, uh, that wasn't that wasn't the gag. That wasn't the reveal. The reveal was that. Okay. Mm-hmm. The reveal was that he had a little piece of Antonio. And that's why Antonio couldn't be a samurai. That's the real reason. That's the real reason. Because Mentor G was sitting there like, nah, I can't have Antonio distracting you. Because Antonio is a distraction and he's not going to let you get to your true potential because you love him. So I'm going to separate y'all. Oh, 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 that is good. Oh, my God. And then Antonio was like, no, no. And he was like, yes. Yes, that's why you ain't got no you ain't got no real like talent when it comes to um doing symbols. So that's why old dude started making started making them off his phone and he started doing like digital ones because he didn't have the actual power himself. Oh, 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 I'm telling you, oh, this is good. This is good. This is good. How am I writing a better show than them? <laughs> mm-hmm. Girl, now wouldn't that be wouldn't that be interesting to watch though? Like mm-hmm. the whole time, Jaden couldn't even be a couldn't even love his his little boo, Antonio. Oh gosh! Oh my gosh! So good, so good. But anyway, um, <laughs> but yes, we had a long way to go, um, to get here. Um, and yeah, as of now, we now have. You know, Izzy being a little piece of lesbian. Well, not lesbian, but a little piece of LGBTQ. Because we don't know if she's lesbian or not. We don't know. I mean, we just know that she she with Fern. I mean, we can speculate and say she's a lesbian, but we don't know yet. It's cool. Like, I, I'm actually happy that we did finally get here. It's just something that we've all, like, many of us have always been wanting. Because we were just tired of the ambiguousness, the a- ambiguity of everything. And it's like, now we finally got something you know, clear cut, like, this is a thing, stop bullshitting. Like, this is, a, this is a part of this character. This is their thing. So, love it. Mwah! Shelf's kiss. Now, we've been talking about this little piece of show for the last longest. Doing little bits of, you know, talking about a little bit of research that we had, that we did on it, in terms of, like, what the show was going to be about. Uh, we talked about the suits. Well, we made fun of the suits. <laughs> mm-hmm. We made fun of the motifs. We're going to actually talk about the show today. We're actually going to talk about Power, Power Rangers. Don and Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Avatar <laughs> Sentai Don Brothers. Now, ooh, child. Just think if they were to actually make this into Power Rangers. Ooh, child. To be truthfully honest with you, I'm not even going to hold you. We've talked about this before. So if you want to, you know, go back and listen to our opinions of the show, you most certainly can. But today is going to be specifically about the very first episode. Now, in terms of the very first episode, what did you guys think about it? It was. Before we get into detail, go ahead. It was interesting. I don't know how I feel about it. Obviously, as I said, it's only the first episodes and a lot of things have not been explained just yet. But so far, based on the vials that we read, it seems like they're all coming true. So that was a surprise. True. You took the words <laughs> right <laughs> out of my mouth as far as uh, it was interesting. Um, I didn't hate it. It kept my attention nope. throughout. It, my, um, yeah. it was it was very it was very interesting. It was very out there as Japanese series are <laughs> compared to some of the stuff we have over here. Yeah. Oh, um, that damn CGI though. Oh, <laughs> that's bad. But I wanted to add this because like Brett and I were talking about this really quickly before the show started. For me, this series reminds me is a of. Um, Y'all remember Animorphs, right? Where, mm-hmm. you know, these little slugs slide into your ears and controls your body, right? So mm-hmm. it kind of reminds me of that where they're everywhere, 
and they are people you know, you know, like they could be anybody. So that like you know, that mentality where in animals are like, they could be anyone, your loved ones, your father, your mother, your your family, your friends, your teacher, you know, like mm-hmm. literally everybody, right? Um, so I like the concept of that. And it kind of reminds me of this TV series called Sweet Home. The monsters, um, they, they, they get turned into, humans are selected to be turned into monsters based on their like deepest, desires right so whatever mm-hmm. desire is they get turned into that kind of monster where they can then obviously attack um these i'm gonna call them rangers what are they called brandon uh you talking about on don brothers yeah the don brothers yeah uh i guess you can call them rangers because they don't have like a like a different thing okay so we'll call a different them rangers. Name. yeah so we'll call them rangers um so they they are obviously just regular humans that get turned into monsters based on their desire that will then obviously attack the city or attack the rangers that concept reminds me of sweet home it's like the zombie apocalypse where i'm not entirely sure because i've only finished season one and it's only season one on netflix so if you're all interested check it out but basically everyone turns into a monster but they turn but um what active um what activates them turn into monster i have no idea but when they turn into a monster, they turn into their deepest desire. So like an example of that was one of the characters on the TV series, she had lost her baby in a very tragic way. So ever since she lost her child, um, she's been obviously mourning the loss of her child and then wants that child back. So in today's present time, she's walking around with an empty stroller all the time. And then when the city broke out, uh, or like, I guess Japan broke out, everyone turned into monsters at some point she turned into a giant baby now i'm not talking about like like you know like a cute giant baby that you see in like baby boss i'm talking like a giant fetal position it looks like it's still in the mother's womb kind of baby and it's ginormous it's like huge and it just does just that it's just a baby that's breathing and and it's really creepy right but so essentially that's what the series is about and i know the john brothers um villains are kind of like that so for me it was like a cool combination of like animorphs cross sweet home and then what i do like is that the well not i do like i should say the whole virtual world is what throws me off i'm not sure how i feel about Mm -hmm. it yeah especially when you know the monster like grew bigger and and then the city raised itself in a virtual way. I was like, um, mm-hmm. okay, I guess. That was... mm-hmm. Right. So that makes it you was... wonder, like, sorry, real quick, makes you wonder. Because then if they're attacking the virtual world, would, how would that affect the real city? They were like up there in the mm-hmm. sky. But anyways, that's my mm-hmm. my, my thoughts now. Your turn. Uh, now that you're saying that, that's making me think um, when the Yellow Ranger, when she was texted those special glasses, I, I guess, uh, where she could see um, the true identities of all the humans around. Maybe it's a situation where we'll learn that, you know, a portion of the city has been, you know, uh, changed into henchmen and monsters and that maybe some of the buildings as well. So what was raised up is actually a part of the city but it's been changed by whoever the big bad is maybe Mm. sounds like a very good um a very good point and probably a very good um idea of what's actually happening in this show because (laughs) i mean they did not specify anything it was just kind of like this first episode was basically this is what's happening. This is the introduction of this world and everything about it. Um, kind of a situation. And yeah, that's it. You know, kind of a <laughs> situation. I probably am going to be the more the most definitive one out of all of us. I liked it. Mm. I actually enjoyed it. Um, there were so many things about it that I just absolutely just I I just enjoyed I loved it so much um and honestly I I've never I have not felt that way about a Sentai 
since Go Busters? Question mark. Um, because yeah, yeah Go Busters was like the first was one of the first Sentai that I actually felt like from its very first episode. I was like, I want to see more. I cannot wait to see more. Um, because you know, it just it hooked me right then like as soon as it started it, it just hooked me and I was like oh okay like what is it giving like what's going on kind of a situation um one of the things that I just enjoyed about it now granted there was a lot of pro there was a lot of pros and there was a lot of cons Ooh, child there was a lot of cons but I guess for me um and we'll we'll just go ahead and get right into it one of the things that I enjoyed is that it was very, it was focused very heavily on the girl. Mm-hmm. Kind of like mm-hmm. Dino Fury, um, where it's all about where, you know, um, Hunter's character, Amelia, is like the main focus. Haruka is the main focus of Don Brothers. So, you know, out the gate, we already are learning who this girl is kind of a thing and it's like super sentai has never when i say never never done that before like that is not a thing like i want the people i want the people listening to know this is new (laughs) Mm -hmm. them spending that much time on a woman in super sentai (laughs) is new that is not something that is that is typical or that is done. Like women in Super Sentai might be lucky if they get a spotlight episode for the most part. And then, or or either that, or you're either the, the girl, the girl who is in love with Red or who has an infatuation with one of the guys, or something like that. Or she's either she's either that, a damsel, or she's a tough chick who normally has no has no background anyway. They just kind of just let her be, let it be tough and that's it. Um, which normally that is always yellow. That's why yellow really, really doesn't ever get much to do, um, even in Super Sentai. So I find it very interesting that with her being the only girl, she gets that much focus. Like the whole first episode was about her. She's the first, well, as far as we know, the first one to get, uh, her power. No, she wasn't. She wasn't. She wasn't. Oh, I guess red, 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 red Ranger. Red and pink. And pink yeah. and black. Or do you think that they all got it at the same time and we just didn't see it? I no, no, because the, the way red that Ranger pink definitely at- had it first and seen with the pink. Yeah, because remember when pink came, she's like he already seemed like he knew what was going on. Yeah, and he was like, "Oh shit, I have to go fight again." Yeah, <laughs> like I he mean, was I- like, "God damn it." <laughs> I mean, and when like, she yeah. came running over there, he was like, we don't have time for that. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. No. 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 He's like, uh, no, we don't have time. Like, the Black Ranger also got his powers, no? Well, we don't see Black in this episode. Oh, who was that? <laughs> um. So the only people that we're introduced in the show, in this, in this episode, was Red, Pink, yellow, and the blue villain, the one, the blue um, generals, or whatever he, or whatever he's going to be. Um, those are like going to be the main day players in the show that we've been introduced to in the first episode. We were introduced to to black yet, um, and we weren't introduced to blue. I was so, um, for a split second. I was thrown off when the red Taru. When he made his entrance and ah! I saw those little black ears, I thought it was going to be the Black Ranger. But you saw what? The um the the folks that were carrying him, they oh, had little oh, black oh, ears. Yes. So I thought that that was going to be the Black Ranger. But ah, uh, okay, yes. No, I personally like that. His entrance. When I say I screamed. I had to watch that entrance at least a good like six times. Like I just could not stop watching it because it's the slow motions of everybody, like of the lady throwing the confetti and the other ladies like throw like 
flapping the like the capes and all that. I'm just like, it was so extra. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And you just see him just like being carried by these guys with his motorcycle, <laughs> and he's like holding his fan. <laughs> and Somebody the, even pointed that out. One of the characters was like, "He's so over the top. He is so over the top." <laughs> it had me in tears. I'm not even gonna hold you. I laughed so hard because I'm just like, yo. <laughs> This is how, if you want to be extra, this is how you make an entrance. Like, he came in with everybody. And I'm like, where did those people go, A, after they were done? Like, where did they go? (laughs) And how does he summon them when he's about to do his entrance? Like, are they real? Are they not real? Like, I'm wondering, because if this is a virtual reality type of um, motif for the show, if they're dealing with virtual reality and all this stuff, are they actually real people? I'm wondering now, are they real? Mm-hmm. Because... So, Go ahead. I have thoughts on that. So, like, um, I guess the, the Blue Warrior, we got to talk about that Blue Warrior, but we saw him change uh, humans into the grunts and into monsters. So I'm I'm thinking that those are real people, but they've been transformed. Well, I'm talking about specifically for Red when he's doing his intro. Oh, yeah. shoot, shoot, shoot. My bad, my bad, my bad. No, 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 no. <laughs> that, that's all I'm that's all I was referring to. I was just referring to the, like that specific one. Well, I'm like, are they real people? But the ones who, you know, became the monsters or whatever, that we, yeah, those people are actually, those are real. The ones that are um that the guess, blue are doing. Mm-hmm. I guess with those uh servants, I don't know. I guess we're gonna find out like what what the Reds deal is, obviously, as we go forward. Cause it looks like he's um we saw in the very beginning, uh the very beginning, the first scene was set 21 years ago and the- <laughs> we see the sky open up with the horrible CG and a peach <laughs> from the sky into the water. And inside the peach is a baby who is Taru, the Red Ranger. So I'm maybe his people found him or, or something. I, I don't know that, that well, def- they, you would assume that they're going to explain that. Oh, yeah. Like, they're definitely going to explain that. And I'm sure that more than likely nine times out of ten, it is a situation where it's a virtual react. Like, all of those people who are carrying him, they're not real. But it's just it's just funny that they are just like, you know, like, just being so extra and just making this a whole scene. And he's just like, loud laugh with me. Ha, 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 ha. I'm just like, oh, my God, this laugh is killing me. Like, I just, I loved it. I loved it. it. It's just, it's great. But yes, so speaking of when we first see, when we first get introduced to the episode, um, like Will said, you know, we get the whole baby falling from the sky, um, well, the peach falling from the sky, and it's actually a baby inside. And basically, the one who discovered him is actually the guy who's in jail, in the virtual reality jail, 21 years later. So Mm -hmm. we don't know how we got from point A to point B Mm -hmm. (laughs) with this dude in a virtual reality jail. You know, so that's very interesting. It's like, how did you end up in jail, baby? What did did you do? Um, Or what didn't you do? Oh, oh, what didn't you do? Um, So, yeah. But then after the intro, do you want to talk about the intro? Do you want to talk about that? Yo, that theme song is a bop. It is, that isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what is this? A high high school musical? Like, I'm like, I don't know. Like, oh, oh, I'm Yellow Ranger. Did, did you see I, the Yellow Ranger dancing? Yes. yes. Like the way they're dancing <laughs> the musical. Like, I liked it, but I was kind of like, I don't know how I feel about. It. I don't know. It. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. Like, I guess. For me, it was a little more kiddified than I expected to be. And it was a little bit more like mm-hmm. cheerful. And, mm-hmm. and I'm like, okay, yes, right. That's why they're trying to gear it towards kids. But at the same time, like, 
but man, like, I don't know. It's, I, I don't, I guess because with all the bright colors already, I was expecting it to be the Steve song to be a bit more um, subtle, but it wasn't. Oh no. Oh no. Subtlety not is not all. what they're going for in this <laughs> show. <laughs> Subtlety is not what they're going for. They said we are going to make this a spectacle. And that is exactly what this thing is. A whole spectacle. Because baby, like, but I, I'm not gonna hold you. I'm like, Will, I love the th- I love the dancing, I love the theme song. I'm like, oh. Like, this is really a thing. I'm still, now watching these costumes move, I'm still not interested in pink and black. They look terrible. (laughs) That CG looks awful. You know, um, still not interested. It looks terrible. But other than that, I mean, in terms of just the characters and how they're moving, you know, it's just the excitement and the energy, the song. Loved it. Thought it was great. Not even gonna hold you. Had a great time. Um, so then we go ahead and we go into the actual episode, and we out the gate already seeing Haruka is being rewarded with a um with an award for being, you know, for her manga and everything, which makes her the youngest girl to receive an award for, for manga. Um, and she's doing a whole bunch of interviews, and she even, she's sitting in the back of the taxi like, God damn, that was a lot of damn interviews, and nobody wasn't saying nothing. Like, they weren't asking me nothing important. <laughs> like, and she makes comment of just being like, okay, like, these interviews was whack. And so she, they get to a stoplight, and the light turns green, but the car doesn't move. And she's like, hey, uh, the, the light is green, baby. You need to go. Dude tur- starts laughing, turns around, and turns into a whole monster on her ass. Homegirl screams, gets out. He gr- like, runs on the opposite side while she's trying to get out. She's trying to get away. He grabs her and slams her head in on the hood of the car. I'm like, yo! Devin's ghost. Devin's ghost. <laughs> it w- wasn't it? <laughs> Wasn't it? I said, oh shit. Oh girl. So <laughs> slams her head on the hood of the car. She's like throwing her flowers at him. Then this mysterious, ha, ah, there's that word again. Mysterious blue dude comes driving through with his motorcycle and hits the hits the uh the monster. This guy who was driving accidentally hits the monster with his car, but I mean, it does nothing because I mean, all it does is it just like bounces off of him. The guy screams and runs away in panic. Blue dude comes up and he's this, you know, this guy with blue contacts wearing a um wearing a blue onesie. <laughs> looking like looking like he a part of the creep video in TLC. Wow. Now, you can't tell me that ain't what he was wearing. <laughs> Looking like T-Boz. So I oh, creep. But, <laughs> but yeah. So he comes up and he transforms. When I say that was the quickest fight. <laughs> that fight was dope, though. But what it was, was dope. The that we got? It was dope, but it was quick. Because the way, now I'm not going to hold you. That part where he does that like Liu Kang kick. And kick mm-hmm. dude head into the glass. Yes. That was awesome. I was like, oh, oh shit. Kick him <laughs> right through a window. I was like, God damn. Kick old buddy, turns around, takes out his sword, slashes him, and blow his ass up. Now, of course, homegirl is like looking all like, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> he saved me. Like, you know, and he's like, sweet dreams. And it just drives away. I'm like, oh God, this is kind of creepy. Um, so I mean, yes, he saves her, right? So, you know, next day she's all at school. Everybody's like, Yay, you did it, girl. 
congratulations her boyfriend is like yeah you know i'm so proud of you and she's like oh he really and did not say that it was more like oh yeah i'm dating the girl that won this war or that did this i mean yes <laughs> he was but... to flex his clout okay he was not to be like i'm so proud of you girl because the way he dumped her ass right after was he go like he was like fast he's like mama um my mom says i'm not allowed to date a thief what i'm like no that shit was dirty that shit was like what he would have got punched dead in his shit for that no i'm sorry you dead ass you for real i would have kicked him so hard that was me (laughs) (laughs) like i'm like oh you dead ass huh like oh you for real like my mama said i can't date these like bitch but (laughs) Like, no, first, like, oh, uh, like, oh, like, no. First, he's like, mama. Then he's like, wait, wait, wait. This is not my mom. This is my girlfriend. Got it. Because he got Girl. scared. That boy got scared. He was about to call her his mom. Listen, he has mom. He has mommy issues. He like, does. I guarantee he has major mommy issues. But, child, so she's at a little piece of cafe. You know what I'm saying? On her little on her phone texting. And all of a sudden she gets three eyes on her phone. And all of a sudden, randomly some glasses come out and smack her in the face, knocking her. <laughs> Those glasses have a mind of his own. First of all, them glasses are ugly. But <laughs> they are ugly, but the way they're flying at her, they, they could be taking out eyeballs, okay? Those things are dangerous. No, seriously, like they could really actually hurt someone. Like, no, no. and her gun, what's happening? Her gun coming out of nowhere, being like, "You need to morph, bitch, now." <laughs> okay, but oh no, oh no, this part right here kills me. So she takes the glasses and she's like going through everything, and she sees the guy as like a foot soldier one minute, and then he's human the next. He's a foot soldier. And then he's human. And she's just like, uh, what? <laughs> now, my thing is, I'm not going to even hold you. I probably would. I don't know what I would have done if I was her. I can't say that I would have, like, flipped. Because I don't know. Like, I don't know what I would have done if I was her. Like, what would you What would you have done if, like, you if you saw that? What she did? <laughs> Got the fuck out of there. <laughs> Cause I'm, cause at, on one hand I was like, I don't know if I would have been as like panicky as if I was her. Like I, I feel like I, I don't know if I would have been as panicky. I probably would have been more so like, kind of more confused more than anything else. Like, uh, what's happening? But like she straight panicked and whole ass. Dude is like, uh, she sees me. And so he starts following her. Me, and then you, of course, you get um Zenkaiser, the who is Zenkai Zenkaiser Black. Kaito, who's not Kaito, is sitting there looking at the whole thing. So obviously he knows what's going on. And nine times out of ten, he probably also knows that that man is a is an alien, but didn't say anything. Um, because I guess he was like business is business. So if he paid, I don't care. Um, <laughs> kind of a situation. So she's running, 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 running. She's running. And child, she encounters more people who, you know, who is, you know, a little piece of aliens. So she sees, so she goes, so she finds a door, opens it, boom. Now she's in the virtual world that I guess is also still inside our world. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But I guess just the virtual world now. And then like she sees that people are like legit, you know, aliens. She flips out, runs, and this is when she has her moment. Now, mind you now, I I do love the fact, I'm not gonna hold you. I like the fact that in this world, this virtual, I guess like a game world. Because I love that literally she stepped on this little circular thing and it just shot her up. Like, 
mm-hmm. like she's like in Super Mario or something. Like mm-hmm. I was just like, oh snap, that's kind of cool. But I mean, it wasn't cool for her because I mean, she landed and you know got hurt. But homegirl shot up. She landed on the roof. They followed her because <laughs> they was like, "Girl, you know, you didn't see too much." You didn't see too much, honey. So, of course, homegirl trying to run. That's when her gun comes out, like Lena says. And it's like, girl, transform. Homegirl transform into Oni's sister. And her, I like her little scene. I actually liked it. It was cute. It was cute. It was legit cute. Um, But homegirl went... And she she got away from him and realized that, like, what the fuck just happened? So then you get a little piece of Taro. He goes to deliver a package. Old dude is like, get the fuck out. <laughs> Sign it. Yeah. It here. <laughs> like, he didn't want to be bothered, honey. And Taro was like, uh, I'm not you. You got to sign it. I'm not you. And dude is like, I don't care. Like, just leave. Go. Taro done cleaned his house. Like, <laughs> like Taro is just like, first of all, hella intrusive. Which I'm just like, I would have been very annoyed with his ass. But, like, come in, clean the man house. And then, of course, like, he, he makes the guy sign it. But then he puts a little, you know, he writes, you know, what was it? Victory, I want to say. He writes the kanji yeah, for, um, yeah, victory. He writes the um, the symbols for victory. And um, he basically and puts it on his forehead. Head. It was almost like a spell. Yeah. And like, dude is like, oh, my God, I feel like I want to do something now. Like, I feel like I want to be productive. He feels like he wants to achieve more and be good and, mm-hmm. and do better with his life. It's almost like he was going through depression and, and you know, and, and Taro's like, yeah, let me fix you up. It's interesting because he's like, we're all linked together. Like, we need to, like, connect the link and blah, blah, blah. Because then he mentions it again later on in battle where he's like, we need to disconnect the link. Mm-hmm. I wonder what that's all about. Right. Like he's all about relationships, which is very interesting, which I'm sure there that's definitely probably going to be uh be a thing in the in future episodes. Like this isn't just something that he's just mentioning one off. Like this is a thing. Like there's something about this. Mind you, so homegirl is back at school. And girl, everybody that turned against her. Everybody didn't turn against her. Her her publicist didn't turn against her. Like her her friends didn't turn against her. Her boyfriend didn't turn against her. Everybody didn't turn against her. Now, do you think that because she had turned into a little piece of Oni sister, that the aliens was like, oh, we're gonna ruin her because now she knows who we are? Mm, that's a good um, that's a good theory because like, why else would that news come out? Exactly. Because homegirl, like, I don't think she, I don't, I personally do not think that she actually plagiar- yeah, plagiarized anything. I don't think she did. I think that they created that and used that to, like, make her lose everything. That's what I think. Because if you think about it, if this thing just all of a sudden just popped up, and especially with them being able to like control, like have like their own world, like a like a virtual world. Who's to say that they didn't create it and put it out there? Kind of like how you know, like how um, people can like put up a lie on the internet and everybody will believe it. Kind of a situation. I feel like that's kind of what happened to her. I feel like that's exactly what happened to her. Like they were literally doing like a comparison of doing that and made her lose everything. So I I legit felt really bad for her. I was like, that's fucked up. Like, if those aliens did do that to her, that is real fucked up. Like, that, I feel like that's worse <laughs> than destroying a city. Like, 
Like, y'all literally went out of y'all way to, like, ruin this girl. Like, y'all went out of your way. I'm like, that's dirty. That's dirty. There's something about that that's real dirty to me. <laughs> I don't know. It, that that just felt that just felt too 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 like it just felt real like not specific, but just like they were just like really out to get hurt. Not so much of like, oh, we're trying to take over the world, but it was like really like we want you kind of a situation. She ends up, you know, finding out, you know, she lost everything and all that. She's all sad, you know. And she was just, she realized she's like, well, I feel like these glasses are 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 the reason that this happened. And she was about to throw them away, and of course they smack her back on the face. And now I'm she's like, talking it, to you can't old get rid dude. of me. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> them glasses was like, you bitch. Can't, you can't get rid of me. <laughs> she was about to throw them glasses away, and them glasses, them glasses felt her throwing them away, and was like, bitch, what you doing? <laughs> and went flying back and smacked her in the face, like, don't throw me, ho. Like, what's wrong with you? Right. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, take that. But, <laughs> girl, she turns around. She's now talking to old dude in, in the cell. And he is like, find Taro, Taro and link up with him. And he'll be able to say, he'll be able to solve your problems. And he'll and and you'll be and you you are now a, a superhero. You are now a warrior. Well, I feel like that's like a stuff. lie. Because like um even like he if he she does find him, it's not so much that he's gonna be able to fix everything. It's more of like I feel like he will just give her answers. And so I feel like that was such a lie when he said that to her. Oh, I don't know. Because remember, he it does kind of seem like he does have abilities. Because if you've seen it, like he like he's been he has powers. Like he has some sort of power of influence. That's what it kind of feels like. I don't know if it's exactly if he has power, but he, I feel like he definitely has some sort of like power over influence. Because he can like do things to make people feel a way, apparently. So you know, maybe he might actually can help her. But but the whole thing with the manga being plagiarized and like, um, what was the other thing she lost? Like, well, I mean, I mean that was basically it. I mean, okay, when, I when saying, she lost was, the manga, she lost everything. Because I was like the whole boyfriend thing. Like, you know what? I'm sorry. He, that was just bullshit. I don't care. She did not lose him. She needed to lose him. Well, I mean, yeah, because mm. I mean, he he wasn't shit to begin with. <laughs> yep, exactly. So, like, what's yeah? So, other than the manga thing, that was the only thing, right? So, it's like, so that's fine, whatever. Girl, regardless, she ended up being like, uh, I'll do anything. I just need to find this dude. Like, and then she bumps right into him. <laughs> And still, she's like, I need to find him. I'm like, girl, his name was on his ID. It was oh, no. Right there. So, like, what's funny was, like, I think at one point, she sees him in his uniform, you know, like, in the battle scene. And she's like, that's definitely not him. That cannot and be. And I'm like, girl, it is. <laughs> he just came in there real extra, but it's him. Like, right? and she still was like, yeah, no, nope. that's definitely not him. <laughs> not <Like. laughs> That can't be him. And I'm like, but it is, oh, sis. It is. Oh God. It is him, sis. Girl, that, sh- that, that joke was funny. But, of course, she ends up, you know... Of, well, meanwhile, back at the ranch, a friend of hers, a, a friend of theirs who we saw earlier in the episode, he's spazzing because he's just like... I need to find my competition. I need to find my competition. Ah. So he's just going through the school, just beating everybody asses with a doggone tennis ball or whatever that little ball is. Just like mm-hmm. smacking the hell out of him. Oh, and he also hits her boyfriend, which I thought was great. <laughs> um, smacks the shit out of him. Good. He so just- then, and- what are you saying? I said, good. He deserved it. Absolutely, totally. And then he, you know, finds this Olympic gold medalist, apparently, finds him and is like, 
you're my competition and turns into a whole monster and starts attacking them. Oh, and of course, you know, the little aliens, they come out. They come out to play. And they're like, ooh hey. Now, their weapons are huge hammers. I'm sorry, but mm-hmm. that just like it hurt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you were to get hit by them things, that shouldn't like it'll hurt. <laughs> I'm like, not these big ass hammers. <laughs> Child, they come out with hammers trying to hit people. They run in in circles trying not to get hit. I'm like, oh no, y'all. Y'all need to do better than that to try to avoid them, but whatever. So Hardika is riding her bike. Once again, that doggone blaster pops out of nowhere, <laughs> transforms her noni sister, and transports her right to where everything is happening. Homegirl is like, oh, what is happening? And she realizes that that's her friend. So she goes over and she's like, yo, like, what are you doing? Like, you need to stop. He's like, don't tell me what to do. And knocks her over. So then... <laughs> Dude in the blue comes once again. We get T bars. <laughs> and child, she's like, she comes sliding over. <laughs> it's the slide for me. I love it. It's the slide. <laughs> she go running over to him and she's like, so yeah, please. You know, please, please make this right and all this stuff. Why he kick her? <laughs> yeah, that he was had the Michael Jackson yeah. kick her like that. <laughs> I mean, why not? She deserved it too. She was being a brat. I'm like, she, you what you say? As a she, she thought he was she thought he was Taru uh Taru. That's what I mean. Point. It was like a little bratty about it. Like, can you not focus the problem at hand? Like, like there's these soldiers, foot soldiers that are trying to come at you and you're trying to find a way to fix your life. Girl, I mean, if you think about it, I mean, it's logical. It is logical because, I mean, the only reason why she's doing this is because the dude behind the cell told her, find right. this man. Right, but, but take so it in though. So she like, thought that was him. No, no, but take it in though. You think that was a great time to be asking him that when there's literally oh, no. things attacking? I mean, why not? What? Just um, to clarify. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> listen, I, she was just like, "I, if you can help me with this, that'd be great." <laughs> if you can help me, please, just help me. Child, she come running her ass over there. Old dude was like, he gave her a little hee <laughs> hee and kicked her. Child, then he turned into the blue warrior, leaps in the air, and kills her friend. Yeah. Child. So he's not a good guy. He is not a good guy. <laughs> Which I'm like, <laughs> I find this very interesting that they can that so i guess i'm guessing that the reason why they turn these people into monsters they turn them into monsters so so that they can you know feed on their i guess feed on their desires or or they turn them into monsters because of their desires and then they kill them because they were able to turn into monsters so in actuality are they actually good guys or are they actually bad guys if you think about it because even though, yes, they did turn them into monsters, but if they weren't selfish about their desires... Hmm. I mean, that doesn't mean you should be changed into that. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, they changed them into it. But remember, like, they have to be... Like, they have... I, I, I'm guessing... I'm gathering that the only reason why they're able to change them into monsters are is because they are being selfish with whatever their desire is. Like that selfishness fuels them to become the monster. Mm-hmm. That, that's what I'm guessing. And because of that, like, when they turn, that's when they kill them. It seems like one of those situations where you're um, 
you have a, uh, I guess, an entity that's trying to play God and trying to give lessons to people, but it's not your place. Those people have to figure out the stuff on their own. So, right. Like, I'm just like, that is wild to me. That, like, literally, they're just like, old dude just came and was like, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, <laughs> turn you into a monster and I'm going to kill you. Which is kind of basically what he did. Like, I mean, because we, we're we pretty much, like, it's pretty much obvious that, that he's turning these people into monsters or that, you know, his group of people are turning him into monsters. Um, and, you know, he leaps up, kills her friend. So she flips out. She's like, oh my God, like, why did, what did you do? And he's like, I eliminated him. Like, <laughs> I got rid of him. Like, what you want me to do? You know, like, <laughs> you know? So she's mad and she starts trying to hit him. But of course, the foot soldiers get in the way. As she does, a man in a suit appears. And he turns around. He's all flabbergasted like, what the hell just happened? She's like, oh, another person. And she goes sliding on over to him too. Mm -hmm. And he's just like, girl, I don't have time. And he transforms. I mean, facts. Nobody has time for you. That's like, what I'm trying to say. It's not the right time. Okay. He is like, girl, I don't have time for this shit. Like, there's a fight going on. I don't Thank have time. You. That's my point. There's a fight going on. Shit is happening. Like, to confirm, I feel like that could have been done afterwards. Just saying. Okay, but it, oh. even then, like you know, obviously we see that it that it couldn't have been done because you know, oh, it you know, because at that point they were annoyed with her. They're like, "This is what you get for interrupting the fight and not focusing on what was the real problem at hand." And the- because of that, bye, bye. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what happened there because you saw that they waited for her to get closer and they're like, yeah, "Okay, bye." No. <laughs> right. <laughs> she's like about to ask questions and they were like yeah we gotta go he's out right so really it was her fault if she waited they would have been like okay you know what we're not as annoyed i'm just saying you know it's kind of like wrong place wrong time because it was just like girl no so she you know dude is like okay you know what i i have to transform i like the little transformation it looks it obviously looks very cheesy like it looks like, like somebody just all of a sudden put a cardboard and it was just like, let's make this cardboard water, you know, kind of like thing. It like what I love is the attention to detail because as this is happening, you literally have freaking um you literally have like the foot soldiers and the monster just watching this like this fake water come by. <laughs> and they're just like, huh? What what's happening? And then you see the box, the box, you know, becomes the guy, he's inside the box, transforms, well, he shoots the um, the box while his shades go flying away to become his visor. Then his, um, his coin comes down, goes over his body, makes him become um, Kiji brother. And boom, he is now the Pink Ranger. So in this fight, one thing that I noticed is that there is a there is a huge difference between when he's in CGI and when he's and when there's a stunt performer in his suit, which obviously there's more than likely there's a person on standing on an apple box trying to <laughs> trying to do these stunts. Um, so there is a mix of um, using a person, a, an actual stunt double, and also CGI. My thing is, why use the CGI anyway? And I understand what they're trying to do because they're trying to make it kind of like a video game kind of a thing. So obviously you're going to have like different types of characters and all that kind of stuff in like, you know, in various, you know, forms. So I kind of get that in a way. Um... But the only thing that just kind of bothers me is just how jank it looks. Like it looks terrible. Because mm-hmm. there somebody actually um somebody did a thing. Well, not a thing, but they kind of like 
paused each scene, like they did screen caps. And literally there are different parts where you see his shoulder pads on his chest. Because like the CGI was wonky. Oh, and like you just see his shoulder pads like all over the place. And it's just like, wow, y'all, like for real, you know, like this looks bad. Like this looks really bad. Um, so I don't know. Like it just it, it's not hitting for me. That CGI is not good. It is not good. Um, but needless to say, they did their little fight scene and stuff. And then, of course, that's when Don Momotaro comes riding in. He comes in and he's doing his little thing. Then he jumps out, starts fighting Blue Dude. And that was a nice battle. I'm not even going to hold you. The choreography in that was really good. I was like, oh, okay. Look at him. So they doing their little fight. He basically pushed back Blue Dude and he's like, all right, you know what? And then he spots the uh, the Olympic dude and is like, and dude is sitting looking at his medal like, oh, my medal, my medal. And I'm like, oh my goodness, really? Really, dude? Like you're on the ground talking about a medal while a whole, while a whole battle is going on? My guy, come on now. I'm just like, oh, this is typical Sentai. This is typical Sentai bullshit, but whatever. So that was just another way of like being like, all right, we got to make this dude turn into a monster. So whatever. So dude, you know, is sitting there crying about his metal. Dude, like, blue dude is like, okay, I'm just going to turn you into a monster. Turns him into a monster. <laughs> and then, you know, the monster that he turns him into looks like something from Ryu Soldier, which is Dino Fury in America, which I thought was very interesting. I'm like, oh, for real? So on this episode, this episode is mainly about the Yellow Ranger, which is a girl. And also, the first monster that y'all use is a night-looking monster. Hmm. Y'all, y'all were really inspired by Dino Fury, weren't you? <laughs> I'm just like, hmm. Interesting. All right. Whatever. So then, of course, Don Momotaro fights the monster, basically kicks his ass. One thing that I enjoyed about this battle, I'm not going to hold you, when he throws that sword and it starts bouncing all over the place, mm, I thought cool. that was fire. And then and then he like threw, he threw the monster and it hit the different swords, like, a, like almost like a pinball machine. Yeah. That was really cool. I was like, oh, shit. That's kind of cool. Like, wow. And, of course, he did his little change when he, you know, turns into Zen Kaiser from the previous series. So, I mean, obviously, that was, you know, that was going to be a thing. Um, so he turns into Zen Kaiser and starts shooting them up, shooting up the, um, the little foot soldiers to help the other rangers. But then... After he throws his sword like a pinball machine and basically just cuts up the monster, he turns around and he does his little finisher, which was really freaking cool. And now I kind of want that sword because I like how it lights up. I'm like, that's kind of freaking cool. But anyway, um, (laughs) destroys the monster. And as he destroys it, all of a sudden, some blue flames come up, which creates a virtual world. And out of the city. So basically, we find out that whatever happens in this virtual world happens in the city. So if they knock over these, you know, these little cube looking things, they're actually knocking over, they're actually knocking over buildings, like actual legit buildings. (laughs) Which is interesting because I'm like, so in this virtual world, Whatever happens here happens in the real world. I'm like, that is really freaking cool. So I'm wondering how that happened in terms of, like, did the worlds mesh? Because this is supposed to be a sequel to Zenkaiser. To Zenkaiser. So was this virtual world, was this virtual game world a world from Zenkaiser? And somehow when the worlds collided, 
that virtual world also probably collided with Earth as well. Maybe. I don't know. But that's for the girls who watch the show. I didn't watch it, so I don't know if that was the case. But <laughs> but that probably might be a thing that might be explored in the show. I don't know. Just making a just making a um a generalization, just making a guess. But so Don Don Momotaro jumps on his bike, drives off, and here comes Zen Kaiser Black. He's sitting there looking like, mm-hmm, I see you. Do go flying into the virtual world on his bike. He sh- um Zen Kaiser Black shoots the gun. Then you get, you know, the Tyrannosaurus dude come flying, come running. And then he combines with the bike, become a megazord. Did y'all like this scene or not? What did y'all think about this scene? The CGI, everything. Like, what did you think about this fight? That was t- the CGI killed me. I'm like, I can't even concentrate on this. I just can't. It was terrible. It looked yeah. awful. I think the only CG that I really liked in this episode was the, the Zord battle. It didn't look as bad as some of the other that, that we got. Um. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> nah. That that shit looked bad. It looked bad. I'm like. <sighs> and I mean that that was something that they did say that they wanted to do. They did say that they wanted to keep using this um the uh, CGI in the show. Like that was going to be like a thing like using cgi in this show was going to be a thing that they were going to um do going forward which i'm like they shouldn't yeah. but okay um on back but, to those power ranger days okay and i'm like <laughs> please don't do that y'all but okay whatever like do you boo do you but regardless they went ahead did they think they did the battle and you know mind you the monster turned into what looked like the dino fury megazord because you saw like Mm -hmm. you saw the blue arm you saw the you saw the pink arm i was like wow so it turned into a whole megazord that's kind of cool um and then of course don momotaro uh defeats it and it becomes the guy and Yellow goes over and asks them, like, you know, are we a team? Like, what's going on? Pink is like, girl, we'll talk about that later. Bye. And they all disappear. (laughs) She looks down. She sees, like, the little ping pong thing that old dude had that he had the nails in. And she's like, damn, that's fucked up. They killed my homie. And then she disappears as well. She's walking through the city with her bike, like, where is this dude? And, you know, the guy, this old man is literally wearing a shirt with dude's name on it. I'm like, the hell? That's awkward, but okay. Yeah. Then, <laughs> I'm like, that's weird. Like, why would you have, why, what? Okay. And then she's like, Taro. And then, of course, the dog's name is Taro. I'm like, oh my God, this is ridiculous. <laughs> This is so ridiculous. And so then after that, she's just like, I think I'll, I'll, I guess I'll never find them. And then they showed us the preview for episode two. So overall thoughts, what do you think? Is it, it, what was it given? I'm looking forward to seeing more. I'm definitely um, looking forward to seeing more because I need an explanation, but yes. Yeah, it was, there was bizarre moments here and there <laughs> and the CG was not very good but um like the story had me it had my interest and it has me wanting to see where it's going to go um I uh, like we said before it was really cool that they focused on a, f- a female ranger and um just seeing how the team will come together should be uh, very interesting yeah, I agree. I agree 100%. Now, if we're going to rate this, what would you rate it? Three and a half. 
Okay. I, I give it a three. I think I'm gonna give it a four. I think I'm gonna give it a four because I just, I had so much fun with it. I mean, you know, did they give us much? Not really. Um, you know, the, the episode was mainly about her. If there was anything that we learned or anyone that we learned about, it was definitely yellow. Like, we definitely learned all about her in terms of just, like, what she's about, um, you know, her, like, her background, what happened to her, why she became a ranger and all of that. We definitely know all the things about her. But... You know, in terms of everybody else, in terms of pink, um, we haven't seen black, we haven't seen blue, we only seen red because he came in extra as hell, and we know that he's um, <laughs> we know that he has some sort of gift, but other than that, it's like we don't really know that much about this guy. Um, you know, so we are we, the only person that we got you know a lot on is pink for sure, not pink, um, blue. Ah, shit. Yellow. Um, <laughs> lots of colors. Lots of colors. Um, but I don't know. Like, I am really interested in seeing how this go, honestly. Um, I'm really interested. I'm really interested in seeing where this could go because this could really be a thing. Um, now, do you guys, are you guys thinking about seeing another episode do you want to review another episode like yeah what what does it give it yeah yeah, I'm cool with that. yeah. Okay. If, it's, if it's good <laughs> i was I, that's all i'm saying because i'm like you know maybe if it's good I, if it's good if we do it so are our sentai season still like 50 episodes long or did they reduce it now um it depends because sometimes they are sometimes they're not mm-hmm so, you know, like, I want to say Zenkaiser was, like, 48 or, like, 49, something like that. Um, I think the last time they had a 50... Jesus Christ, when was the last time they had 50 episodes? Um, I want to say... Um, oh, goodness. When was the last time they had 50 episodes? Um, let me see. Last time they had 50 episodes was Lupin versus Pat. That's somewhat recent. Yeah, that was like, uh, let me see. That was two, three, four years ago. Hmm. Four years ago, they had 51 episodes. Most of the other seasons have been ending around like 49, 48. 48 episodes, something like that. That kind of seems like basically 50. Still. Basically 50. That's a lot. But you know, they they're just like, we are <laughs> we'll get to this this little stretch and then that's it. I mean, within recent years, the shortest one has been Cure Major, ending with 45. Um, so that was like the shortest one. And even then it was supposed to be longer, but because of Rona. They had to change the um. They had to change the storyline at the last minute. So, um, what actually happened in Cure Major was not supposed to happen. They had a much different ending, but you know, Rona stopped that. Um, but yeah, most of the seasons tend to end with like around 47, 48, 49 episodes. So, we shall see what happens with Don Brothers. But I hope you enjoyed our review of the show are you gonna watch it if you do watch it let us know what you think if you did watch it let us know what you think also in terms of what we talked about earlier with power rangers and representation let us know what you think about that i mean like i mean obviously you know we still have a long way to go but are you are you excited at least about where we are um, you know, or anything like that. Give us your thoughts. Let us know. Let us know what you think. Um, and as always, you know, definitely hit us up on our on our pages, on our Instagram, on our YouTube, on our SoundCloud. Like, let us know what you think. We really want to hear from you. And once again, my name is Brandon. My name is Lena. And my name is Will. 
and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.